Calcium and alkalinity are vitally important chemical parameters in reef aquariums. They are especially important in reefs with abundant populations of stony corals. If they're not readily available in the water, corals and other organisms will struggle developing calcium carbonate skeletons. This problem will inhibit their growth and over time will cause their demise. So what are these ions? Let's go over a little bit of background information. Calcium. Calcium is one of the major ions in salt water. It's the fifth most common behind chloride, sodium, sulfate, and magnesium. In most healthy reefs, the calcium level hovers around 425 parts per million. It regularly pairs with anions such as sulfate, carbonate, and bicarbonate. While calcium is fairly straightforward, alkalinity on the other hand is a little bit more difficult to explain. It's not a particular ion, but rather the buffering capacity of salt water. Buffering capacity can be thought of as the amount of acid required to lower the pH of salt water to the point bicarbonate turns into carbonic acid. If you remember from high school chemistry what a titration is, it's where you add an acid to a sample and for the first several drops, nothing really changes. After more drops are then added, there's a sudden change. That change indicates that the acid overcame the buffering capacity of the solution. Higher alkalinity levels equate to a higher buffering capacity, which is considered a desirable thing in our reef tanks. High buffering capacity is one of the measures of chemical stability. Maintaining both calcium and alkalinity levels are vitally important. So if we're having low levels of calcium or alkalinity, what is there to remedy the situation? On quick glance, it would seem that simply adding the desired ingredient could easily solve this problem. For example, if your reef tank had a calcium level of, say, 300 parts per million, when you desire a value closer to 400, you could add calcium chloride and boost it. Unfortunately, reef aquarium chemistry is rarely that straightforward in practice. Addition of a calcium supplement in this manner often comes with a corresponding fall in alkalinity levels. The converse is also a possibility where calcium levels fall as a result of alkalinity supplementation. This problematic seesaw effect between calcium and alkalinity stems from how the two ions interact with one another. The two ions combine to form calcium carbonate and fall out of solution, thus becoming unavailable to the organisms. The first technique is very basic, water changes. Water changes help manage fluctuations to a large degree. Most salt mixes available in the hobby today are formulated to have slightly higher concentrations of both calcium and alkalinity. Frequent water changes replenish major elements as well as trace elements. Admittedly, this technique works best in reef tanks that have moderate coral stocking levels. Some aquariums, however, are densely packed with stony corals. For these systems, additional supplementation may be required. That brings us to option number two, Kalkwasser. Kalkwasser, or lime water in German, is an age-old supplement that's highly effective in boosting both calcium and alkalinity. Kalkwasser is calcium hydroxide, and it's considered a balanced supplement because it boosts both calcium and alkalinity together. Kalkwasser is a white powder that you mix in with purified water. It gets very cloudy for a few hours, but after the cloudy particles settle, it leaves a super clear saturated solution. That solution is Kalkwasser. And then what you do with that is you drip it in slowly to the aquarium. Many hobbyists use Kalkwasser as their primary top-off water rather than just regular purified water. That brings us now to number three, calcium reactors. It's a more automated method of maintaining calcium and alkalinity. These devices slowly dissolve calcium carbonate media in the reaction chambers, and slowly that's introduced back into the tank. They're great for keeping water chemistry rock solid for months. 
A while ago we did a video all about calcium reactors, so if you're interested in a more detailed look at them, you can click the annotation to go to that video. As great as Kalkwasser and calcium reactors are, they are balanced supplements, which are not particularly effective when there is an imbalance in the reef. If the value of one component is low, but the other is in the normal range, using a balanced supplement is not the best method to remedy this. Here is where a two-part solution like ESV's Bionic really shine. These additives can be put in in different amounts, and over time, the levels can be boosted. Like I mentioned before, it's not particularly great just to add in a calcium or alkalinity portion by themselves, but you can inch them up by adding them both with a slight heavier dose of the component that you wanted to boost. The fifth and final method for dealing with calcium and alkalinity issues is to take a look at magnesium. Now it may seem counterintuitive that the solution to calcium and alkalinity imbalances is to elevate magnesium, but these three ions interact regularly. Magnesium is very similar chemically to calcium. It can bind up carbonate ions, thus increasing the overall alkalinity in the water. If you find that no amount of tweaking calcium and alkalinity individually is helping, you may want to make sure that it's not your magnesium level that's too low. Our previous video, we talked about magnesium in depth, so if you haven't seen it yet, I'll link it right here. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe to our channel and visit us online at advancedreefaquarium.com. Take care, everyone.